Let's mountain do it up. Let's not get whacked in the process here. It's hard to see what is going on. What's going on? What's going on? Why do we have so much traffic tonight? Why do we have so much traffic? Hello, Kelly. How are you? You didn't call in last night, Kelly. Oh, boy. Hey, Miranda. Hey, Ronnie. Good evening. Happy Sunday. Fire chick. How you doing, babe? Time to enjoy a cup of coffee. I think we'll have to take this spot. I think this guy always gets irritated when I'm, uh, he likes to listen to his music in there. Hey, Naomi, Jessica Dean reporting from Washington. President Day traffic. I guess some people have a holiday tomorrow. I guess bank holiday. Hello, Dan. Hello, Callie Mo. I'll be right back. Diane, don't yell. I haven't had time to get to your... <laughs> your last video.
Richard Belzer died. Uh, Noreen let me know that. Hey, uh, Michelle, how are you? June, how you doing, sweetheart? We got Noreen in here. Anybody else? Did I uh, having chicken and baked potatoes? Sounds good. Make sure to have your greens. This is the first time I picked up a phone. Uh, let's see. All right, here we go. Good to see everybody tonight. Oh, itchy. You had your greens today. <laughs> you had your greens today. Hello, Catherine. How are you guys? I'm only, I made that pizza last night. I don't want to waste it, so I'm just going to heat up some slices tonight for, uh, for dinner, uh, Leafs are losing to Chicago. Tomorrow is family day, meaning what? Meaning, meaning, meaning. Okay, so let's just get my coffee underway here. I hope everybody's been having a fantabulous Sunday. Hey CSM, how are you? Tomorrow's a holiday. Well, it's President's Day here. I have no idea what family day is in uh, uh, Hello, Louise. How are you? We, yes, we're had a holiday here It's a holiday here. It's called President's Day uh, So I don't know what family day means. I don't know what it's all about. It sounds like just Follow the leader, right? Does anybody know what date Canada was officially uh, countryfied? <laughs> this is gonna this is gonna win me a lot of Canadian friends here. <laughs> family Day. So what do we do? What do we do on Family Day? Do we play Twister? Do we? Um, uh you know family picnic do we uh the, what do we do we all go to the movie theater we go ice skating we all go to a hockey game what do we do on uh family day somebody uh let me know what the heck happened here the chat's disappearing i put green onions on my bed does that count no it doesn't count when cheryl comes in she can explain it to you uh, no, green onions don't count. You should be having a balanced diet there, Naomi. July 1st, 1867. Wow, that's a that's pretty new, right? I mean, that's not too... Uh, hey, Russ. I thought it was like eight, early 1800s or something like that. Yeah, thumbs up or appreciated. Carnival, baby! Better get it out of your system and gird your loins. Because uh, Wednesday begins Lent, so you best gird your loins. Uh, for those of you who participate in the program, for those of you who don't, it's another day on the calendar. Well, if you don't, make sure you take your uh, magnesium every day. It's very important. Where are all the cats? Oh, don't worry, kitten cat. Every time I go back to the rancho, right there, there, every morning I wake up, I got two bobbing heads at the back door, right? Every night when I walk in the door to get ready to uh, get something to eat, they're always there at the back door. So thank you for the links, by the way. Um, kitten pet cat the first one you sent me about the oils and stuff i followed that guy on um had followed that guy on tiktok he is the one that first alerted me that um you stuff that you think is olive oil uh unless it's like a single source olive oil it's not that great thank you cindy how are you doing sweetie great to see you tonight the beautiful cindy talks is here yeah, I saw the uh, the plant-based, yeah, about the, um, and I'm not really, I think a lot of people that do the plant-based, uh, you know, like Diane, it's more, it's more founded on ethical concerns than dietary concerns. It's the other oils that you have to be concerned about, too. Good evening, Charles. Nice to see you. I don't know if we've ever had a live stream here that's not had a 
fire engine, a police car, emergency medical services rolling around. So uh, I think they need a cat house. They need to be able to, no, I'm not going to be getting a cat. I'm not in, that invested into the cats. All right. No, 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 no. I'm not that invested into the cats. I'm more of, more of a dog person. Now I get along with the program because the cats are fun, but we're in California here. Um, you know, it does never really gets that cold. And they're always, they're always underneath of the uh, back door where they get shelter anyway in there. So I'm not that invested in it. Uh, that would be Blackbird's uh, department. Blackbird can take part of his paycheck and get the uh, cat houses and all that uh, stuff. I wouldn't. I wouldn't count on. I wouldn't. I wouldn't place a bet on it. Yeah, you think about sweeteners and sugar or fat count, but you realize that these inflammatory oils are and everything. I really read labels now. You started. You talked about reading labels a year ago when you changed your dietary uh, approach and stuff. Now you've kind of narrowed it down to, uh, um, yeah, like olive oil. Now you've kind of li li narrowed it down to a general um, framework that says the less ingredients generally the better. The less ingredients the better. So when you look at a label, if it's, if it's, every kind of chemical preservative or stuff like that how how good can that be i don't know how can you study the interactions in the body in a digestive system when you have 30 or 40 different uh, minerals or 30 or 40 different uh chemicals in there who knows how they bind together uh, uh oils are everything yeah the um the oils are Oils are staples, especially uh, uh, soybean oils, your palm oils. Palm oils had to be removed from, um, they were considered, I think, trans fats. They had to be removed from a lot of, uh, a lot of foods. Uh, when we had that trans fat revolution and you had to remove trans fats, I think palm oil was a huge, huge, huge one. And it's not really known as a healthy, healthy oil. Now I might be speaking out of my butt, but I'm just saying that's the recollection I had. I know that palm oil was kind of knocked down a bit. How you doing, Jody? Chemicals aren't included for your well. They're added for yeah, they're added for preservation and um, mouthfeel and things like that for how it is. Crisco has hydrogenated oil. Everything in moderation. That's the key. Hello, Alan. How are you? How are you doing? I think that's the key to it all. The body can process a lot of different things, but if you're continuously pounding it, um, then it becomes problematic. I just found out that I can go pet that I can go pet shelter dogs. I never knew that. Um, I guess it depends on the area. Hey, Barry, I think the, um, the pandemic broke a lot of strides. It broke a lot of, um, you know, it broke a lot of routines that people had. So I don't even know if shelters, uh, I'm not even sure. I mean, I think that the Sonoma County Humane Society, they have, um, dog walkers that go in and people like that that volunteer and all that that's why i can uh why i can't can my own food i know exactly what it's in that's really good that's actually sugar is just as hard on your organs as alcohol um yeah i think i think sugar is even you know you might talk about artificial sweeteners but apart from sweet and low where the uh, founder of the company in new york pitched himself off of a building and did away with his life i think just raw sugar is worse and i think fruct high fructose corn syrup is uh again worse but it will be found everything because we have a diet that's high in sugar. We have uh, breakfast cereals that are, in some cases, uh, that 
are the predominant ingredient behind wheat or corn uh, and things like that. So uh, how good is that? I don't know. It's horrible. Yeah. So I, tr I try to look out for that. Try to look out. Try to limit my use of uh, sugar. If you're doing it in ba ba recipes, like if it calls for a cup of sugar for a lemon meringue pie i'll try to knock that back to three quarters of a cup or something like that unless i'm going to like i prepared a lemon meringue pie and i took it down to the boston janet's in which case i don't want to deviate from the recipe i want to take it up to the full cup of sugar because they're not their tastes aren't acclimated to you know the uh, sourness of uh, something a little less i actually don't mind sugar is the added sugar i try to avoid Natural is fine by me, but add is no thanks. How come a can of Coca-Cola, Crisco is fine. I mean, Crisco has half the saturated fat of butter. Okay, don't let that. Don't let the butter industry uh, feed you a whole lot of malarkey. I found that the hard way, sugar-free. Yeah, it kind of gives you the uh, the uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, I think the boss has a dynamic sweet tooth, but he's moderated. Uh, the big thing was uh, something that I had to keep an eye on, which was the con consumption of alcohol. And uh, I think the uh, drinking every night. How you doing, Amanda? Good to see you, sweets. I think drinking a uh, drinking a lot every night is hard on the conversion of alcohols to sugars and things like that it takes a toll 39 grams of sugar well i don't know about grams right we're in a normal measuring system here uh look here's the deal if a can of coca-cola has 120 calories in it okay and where does the calorie come from does it come from the carbonated water no does it come from the syrup? Don't know, but when you look, when you look and figure that a, that a teaspoon of sugar is 17 calories, and then you go do the math and you think to yourself, wow, go to a sugar bowl and take out seven to six, six to seven teaspoons of sugar and put it into a glass of water and drink it okay now if you do six or seven show to sodas a day you're drink you're eating 50 teaspoons of sugar okay how can that be healthy uh, a 12 ounce cam has 30 and 9 grams of carbs well, they'll speak grams when it's convenient for a company, a food purveyor and a packager and a, a consumer goods company. will speak in grams to Americans when they can't do the conversion. They'll do packaging of sodas used to be in, in uh, cases and things like that and six packs. You'll notice that they move the to eights and twelves eight twelves for the specific purpose that it's harder for your average american consumer to do math now and figure out if they're getting a good deal or not it's all designed by psychologists to bamboozle you and to trip you up on your math skills a pound of sugar 16 out in a can it's one sixteenth of a pound of sugar yeah so if you have if you have six six to eight sodas a day, which is not unusual, okay, which is not unusual, then you're talking about a half a pound of sugar a day. Hello, Kimberly, how are you? Jody said, I've been allowing myself one can of it. I'm giving it up for Leonard. No, it's horrible for me switching to Coke Zero. If you can switch to Coke Zero, it's pretty decent in my opinion. Is it is it healthy for you? No, well, we could argue it's not but um, in moderation and things. But again, when Coca-Cola came out, it was not designed to be an every day with every meal. Kids, hey, Nathaniel, people get up 
people get up in the morning and the first thing is grab for soda and soda for breakfast and soda at school and soda at the 7-eleven after school soda for dinner soda for late night snack it was it was sold in six ounce bottles it was a treat once in a while you would have it as a treat and that was it all my iced tea is sugarless never soda uh, San Pellegrino, uh, the orange is very good, Catherine. It's just a bit pricey, but uh, then again, you said you didn't work your whole life to be uh, to be penitent and in denial of <laughs> things. <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, that's just the thing. Hey, P2E. So I will be having, uh, giving, I will not be drinking during the uh, Lenten season, and I'm examining other things too. Uh, uh, I'm examining other things too. It's good to you, it's good for us to get control over our, our, uh, our appetites and things in life. Uh, yeah, it's a start. Anybody have a, I don't know about a soda stream. I hate sugar, but I like sugar if it makes sense. Nobody would sit down in uh, at a table and eat seven teaspoons of sugar straight. It's the way that sugar gets into the food process that ups our consumption of sugar because people would be naturally repulsed at the uh, idea of just sitting down and eating straight sugar. So, okay. But like Kit and Cat said, how many people really examine the labels on food items and see how the ingredients that are in there and look some of them up. White sugar is bleached. Uh, white sugar is bleached of the natural molasses and candy, the sugar brown and grain of it, and it's not brown sugar like in America. Well, cane, sh cane sugar is, um, uh, cane sugar is, uh, you know, I don't know. I'm not a sugar person. I don't know. Rockstar Zero, I don't know. Uh, I've had five hour energy to a little bottle, but I've never had a energy drink before. Good evening, Alex. You know, it's almost unusual in this world. You tell people I've never had Grubhub or uh, DoorDash or Uber Eats. Uh, never saw Star Wars, never saw Star Trek. Uh, never, never had an energy drink. People look at you like, <laughs> like, what kind of fool are you? Yes, ketchup has sugar. Yes, yes, yes. Barbecue sauce, all that. Yeah, it's hard to believe, huh, Raquel? All right, I've led a very, I've led a very sheltered life. Our food co-op had a nutrition and a visual display of the actual sugar content of various sodas. Uh, large test tubes of sugar. It's, it is, um, uh, you know, it's an eye opener. <sighs> Mr. Chukane, you can try products that say no added sugar. That helps a lot. Yeah. Ketchup has a lot of sugar. Barbecue sauce has a lot of, uh, you know, brown sugar is the basis of a lot of that stuff. Like, like for me, like Sunday, I like to give myself a little bit of an extra treat. So you saw, those of you saw the short this morning, I put up uh, the blueberry, uh, I had two blueberry pancakes with some blueberry compote that I uh, put on top of it. It was probably like 800, 700, 800 calories or something like that. Otherwise, other days I'll have oatmeal or, um, you know, a bowl of bowl of cereal or something like that. And I'm talking about Star Trek the movies. Never saw any of them. Never saw any Star Wars, Battlestar Galactica. It's just, it's just, it just was never my thing. Only well, the history of sugar that will open your eyes. There's a lot of interesting. There's a lot of interesting things on um, that you can you can really discover a lot. You know, it just depends where your mind goes to. Can't stand star. <laughs> I was just never really into that genre of. Uh, I was always more fascinated with history and uh, 
uh, documentaries and and learning learning things. Well, that's an important thing, Catherine. I mean, sugars and is, is uh, let's not poo poo it either. I mean, sugar's used in a lot of lot of applications, and it's not sugar itself that's inherently a negative thing. It's the it's the amount or consumption quantity of it that is very problematic very problematic uh see g hughes brand makes great sugar-free barbecue sauce marinade salad dressing and it's cool uh louisiana domino sugar no man give me that baltimore domino sugar baby the third biggest neon sign in america right there on baltimore harbor domino sugars <clears throat> Two pounds of seeds candy but you know i mean there's a point catherine i mean like you you really opened my eye you know this is like gonna be cold in the house it's like really you know i mean i work my whole life hey Ockmist, how are you i work my whole life and i'm not gonna be uncomfortable i'll spend the kids inheritance and that's it uh, right because what has posterity ever done for me <laughs> So I think it's the amounts of things that uh, I didn't have an artichoke or avocado until 17. I probably didn't have an avocado until I was 21, 22. I mean, uh, it was on the East Coast. Yeah, alcohol. I used to go out and buy a 50-pound bag of alcohol, a 50-pound bag of sugar every time I'd put up a batch of uh uh, made a batch of bourbon. I would use bourbon. I would use it for an accelerant. I wasn't going to sit around and crack the grains and and long long uh, long chain starches and things. Well, thank you, Barry. I wasn't going to do that. You know, that's why popcorn Sutton had tons of sugar, as if nobody would notice that uh, somebody's getting tons of uh, tons of sugar. Delivered to their uh, property, right? Here comes an 18-wheeler. Uh, but I don't know. When you when you look at stores today, you have to understand economics is going to always be the great funnel that pushes people along to the perceived best value for a buck. To wit, you come here for a pizza... And for $7.99, you can get a whole cooked pizza. Or for $8.99, you can get the big meat pizza here. Now, what are you going to do? You, you go to buy greens. You go to a store. They want a ridiculous price for lettuce and uh, uh, just, just vegetables and stuff. So people are going to default to the easiest and... Uh, the easy solution to feed themselves and that's why I see that 7-eleven is becoming more turning more and more into a fast food restaurant and that's probably what the corp corporate strategy is that's where you really make your money uh, selling chicken wings and hot dogs and donuts and and pizzas and all that kind of stuff that's that's a really good margin stuff in there even sugar cereals expensive yeah i never understood the, the dynamics of uh cereal but there's companies that have slowly started to break the stranglehold of kellogg's and general mills uh on that foods of convenience are the worst for health it takes time yeah say so foods of convenience it's also foods of economy, like the people that are here all the time. Where, where are they going to go home? Are they going to go set up a camp stove at their, uh, at their, uh, behind the bush where they're staying? Rancho Kitchen Cookbook. Yeah, the hack job cooking. My 7-Eleven smells like burning glass. Four bucks for a box of cereal. That's cheap, right? I mean, that's why I like, uh, you know, go to grocery out and I'll see Barbara's shredded oats right little sh and that's good value for two ninety nine or whatever for a big box uh, seven bucks for a box of rice krispies yeah 
So, you know, people are insensitive to the cost of it because a lot of people are on subsidized food. And this is not a this is not a negative i'm not throwing shade on subsidized food but if you don't pay you know if you don't pay for it directly right if it's given to you then you're gonna you're not gonna value what the purchasing power what i could do with that you're probably going to default to uh you know cheap things and buying cheap eats and things like that and getting all that kind of crap Deals on cereals, beans. Yeah, there's, there's, you can get good deals out there. You know, a grocery outlet has good deals. I mean, yeah, I used to shop there alone on a Friday night, and now, you know, we got the parking lots full of stuff. Yeah, in Baltimore, Baltimore's Inner Harbor, they have a huge domino uh, processing facility. All the, all the uh, sugar cane comes in from, um, overseas south america up in here took cheerios out of my diet but you also have to live life too you also have to you have to also enjoy life everything in moderation so you know i feel better since i cut i cut the drinking down to friday and saturday night and then for lent i'll be giving that up until we'll be having a super blowout on Easter with a big, uh, big coconut cake and uh, layer cake, and doing it up for Easter. But you know, it's something that's good for me. So, you know, do I like my beer? Of course I do. You know, I love my beer. I love my beer. <laughs> <laughs> I love my beer. I might get a tear in my eye tonight. I don't know. When I think when I think about that. How you doing, Judy? Nice to have you call last night. And also, if you guys didn't see the Rosie Murphy channel or listen to it, you should take a couple hours and run that live stream uh, from last night. Judy was one of the callers. She was wonderful. Um, you know, very informative. And uh, we had... Um, uh, James call in, and we also had uh, Jamie call in, who would, who had been incarcerated in, uh, ended his stint in San Quentin, came from Fol Folsom Prison to San Quentin, and ended his stint there. And it's it's a riveting hour to listen to as I interview him and talk to him about daily life in a place like San Quentin. I think you'll find that a very interesting, um, very interesting uh, discussion. It certainly was certainly opened my eyes to life. Uh, it was educational last night, June. I mean, uh, we had we had a pretty good crowd going late into the night there listening to that. I was very impressed. Usually we get a drop off around eight o'clock or something, but uh, people were definitely. Uh, riveted that content. That's why I like it when you guys call in because you know things that I can't possibly know. I'm not talking about lockup, but you know, I'd like to talk to June about life in uh, Puerto Rico and stuff. And uh, what was it like? She talked about her connection with sugar and um, you know what she thinks about Puerto Rico now and uh, uh, what's going on and, and things. I mean, I can, I can get a lot of I can I can learn a lot from you. Right, learn a lot of look at look at Catherine. I mean, Catherine is like uh, there's nothing that she doesn't know about uh, the Bay Area, the area I live. In. I don't know a lot about it. Right, I was excited. I mean, I'm looking forward to when it gets a little warmer. We'll go around uh, Vallejo and do a little touring and all that. It was very interesting. So I always encourage people call in share share your life and share your experience well i don't know about an honor it was an honor to speak to you judy i don't know if it's an honor to st <laughs> we could debate if it's an honor to speak to me but it certainly was an honor to speak to you uh for a couple of years amanda okay so uh right so it was a good time we had uh we we just uh, it was good i mean i was just uh i get to know 
Judy's voice and hear what it was like to be, uh, you know, supervising or overseeing the delivery of service, street level services to homeless people in Seattle and stuff. A pretty thankless task that a lot of people have an opinion about. Do you eat avocado only when Janet makes um, guacamole, kit and cat? I was raised on the East Coast. I probably didn't have my first avocado till I was 21 years old, if that. So the the mouth texture of avocado is something I've always had a, a difficult time dealing with the texture of it. It's it's kind of an oily. Uh, texture it's like a oily texture okay so i've never really got used to the um uh texture but i do enjoy it when it's made into a guacamole it's very good avocados are supposed to be very good for you you know the haas they're supposed to be some of the best oils that you can get i know that avocado oil is not cheap i don't know what the properties are of health for cooking i don't know if it's a high temperature uh, oil or, 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 you know, the ways of cooking with that. And, uh, you know, I got a lot to learn about that. Love avocado and salad. It's a high temperature. Oil. Yeah. So I'm going to, you know, when Janet, Janet makes a fully loaded salad, she'll cut up a couple avocados in it. She'll get some artichoke hearts, which I like. I like artichoke hearts. Thank you, Cass. Good to see you tonight. Okay. That's cool. It's the highest temperature. That's awesome. So I'm not surprised. The bad oils are the bad oils. Palm oil. Uh, I don't think corn oil is the best. I think canola oil is kind of in that great middle ground. Uh, peanut oil. I'm not sure about peanut oil and all that. Peanut oil goes rancid. Uh, rancid is a rather quick pace. Yeah, she's a good cook. Yeah, she's accomplished. <clears throat> canola can well, I don't think canola is bad but uh, it's really high temp yeah you got to do high temp don't cook with butter okay I mean jeez <laughs> I cringe when I see people throw butter into a pan and then pop a steak into, <laughs> into a pan Ooh. avocado oil have but I don't really cook that hot so I use olive for light uh, saute work yeah there you go it's a good it's a, it's a good I mean, that sounds, that sounds proper. All the ones listed are for inflammatory uh, oils. Now, not everybody's going to be infected, affected, Noreen, by what's considered an inflammatory uh, oil. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be, everybody's genetic composition is different. Sesame, every oil is high in calories. Every oil is high in calories. Homegrown avocados are delicious. Well... Growing avocados here in the Bay Area is a, maybe down in the South Bay. It's okay, your area, but it's it's really dicey up here. You, the avocado trees grow well, but they're uh, they're in terms of getting an avocado or three. It's very difficult. It's very uh, it's almost unknown. It's not like down in Southern California. Same thing with uh, pistachio trees. I had the only two pistachio trees in the whole county here. I had to have a county inspector come out and agricultural do it. Anybody have an oil? Hey, Limo, anybody have an opinion on grapeseed oil? Or how about rapeseed oil also? I don't know if, I don't know if the best oil is coconut. I don't know. I don't know. What a coin I was just making, <laughs> making guacamole. When you mentioned it, all right. All right. Good to see you, Limo. <clears throat> well, it's a Canadian product. <sighs> Sold in big quantities. What's the use for it? I don't know. Grapeseed is not good. The rapeseed is canola oil. Well, there we go. Ah. Uh. So it just depends. You know, it's the way I feel about, uh, you know, like in Maryland, at Thrasher's French Fries on the beach there, they use peanut oil to cook the uh, Thrasher's French Fries and things. Uh, but I've I've used peanut oil before. 
to make french fries you guys will see you rarely see me ever use a. I don't think I've ever had a potato in kitchen stadium um, I don't know I think I don't know fun video watching you buy the that little nut tree yeah I went out and watered it today I don't know about lard Raquel I know that lard performs very well when it comes to making pastry crust and pie crust and things like that. But if you use the Manteca, which is the shelf brand here, it has a very animally uh, uh, sinewy suet type aftertaste to it, which is not which is not very appealing. But they'll use that for cooking a lot of Mexican dishes in. Indians in my country use coconut oil to fry fish and everything else. Yeah, you, well, people are going to use the oil they have at hand, right? Uh, use lard, lard and tamale and masa. So I'm, you know, I'm like, eh, yeah, yeah, you know. Uh, we don't have a lot of choice. I like the ve I like the animal Crisco, but you rarely see it anymore. It's all the vegetable Crisco. Because what it, the hell's, excuse me, what does it matter if you're going to make a pie once a month? It's not, it's going to be meaningless, the intake of that. How you doing, Bunny? Uh, what's going on? You keep changing your name and everything. Uh, you know, this is, my channel name has been the same since Je January 3rd of 2000 and, uh, 2013. Thumbs up or appreciate if you're uh, if you're in. And Oakdale, Oakdale avocados grow good. Yeah, but if I'm going to be making a pie once a month. Okay, babe, your first account, the chat's not working. If I'm going to be making a pie once a month, I would go out of my way to find the, the real deal Crisco to make that pie crust with. One thing I eat every day now are eggs, just like Rocky. Uh, were you hit by the egg uh, egg situation there? Yay, that's your birthday. There you go, Shelly. Yeah, it just passed my 10th anniversary on YouTube. January 3rd. So I don't know. Uh, I'll be keeping an eye on egg prices. We're seven ninety nine for a dozen and a half here. Probably Safeway has some lost leaders they put up and things like that. I don't know. I don't think California was ultra affected by the uh, eggs were five down now. They're back down to three bucks. Okay, so they said that there's, as I thought, there would be a huge glut of eggs to come in to take advantage at a high price. Everybody that could pop out an egg would be doing it uh, the whole secret to nutrition is moderation exactly you know fast food fries it used to be great when they cooked it yeah i'm telling you chef when the trans fat panic hit man if you went in to get a you suddenly went in to get a bag of doritos or something and you would try a dorito you're like oh my what happened to the taste of this? And they still haven't they still haven't recovered that ground. Because the human the human mouth and tongue, we love fat, right? Best way to cook pancakes is with lard. You know, with the uh, uh, you know, people love the taste of fat. Uh, so I've certainly increased my carb take in winter time. Doritos are made just down the street. Yeah, every time I go to Las Vegas, I pass the um, Frito Lay factory just on on California 58, just east of I-5. There, when you get off and go 58 to start going up to uh, towards Bakersfield. There's a Frito-Lay factory uh, right there, and they're always around the clock pumping at goodies. 
Mom cook with Crisco and we ain't Midwest diet grow. We were all skinny as real. We move, we move was wore off what we, yeah, of course. The level of exercise was higher. All that. Free dough is best so you remember how good those were. Yeah, yeah, and I haven't had a free dough in years. I mean, I just not my cup of tea. I, I will grab a bag of Doritos once in a while. Uh... You know, maybe maybe once a month or something like that. I enjoy pretzels. Callie Mo sent me the sourdough. I had picked up a, a thing of the pretzel sticks. I mean, I'm getting to an age. I don't really care anymore. You know, I'm just gonna enjoy life a little bit too. I live. The smell is really bad. <laughs> the smell. The smells bad coming from there. <clears throat> um. Yeah, I'm not a ranch person, Miranda. I like the um, chili verde, or I like the um, the traditional cheese nachos. <clears throat> Those are the two that uh, I like. I never really could acquire a taste of ranch. Uh, worse than bad, nasty. Maybe it's the day they clean out the <laughs> Fritos were for camping with bean dip, so kids could giggle about tooting in the, <laughs> tooting in the tent. Then the meter's 39. Yeah, I remember 39, 49, 79 cents, a dollar 49, a dollar 79, dollar 99. Now we're 2.49 for a uh, bag of something that with the the inherent product inside is probably worth about 2.5 cents on that so <clears throat> uh, 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 how you doing ramble on doritos and el pato el patio sauce are my favorite that's cool i like hot wings with the rancho i like taco flavor uh what's the best fish to fry i think i don't know i like cod <clears throat> rock cod you know the stuff deep water fish i don't eat warm water fish only deep water, cold water, ocean fish. We never had chips growing up. Only a special. We never had. I never had snacks on it. Right. My mother later on would pack a school lunch for us, and it would have a little thing of Fritos or something, a little teeny tiny, which was okay. We never thought anything about it. And once a once a week, you could get the Dream Sickle or the Fudge Sickle. Yeah, no frozen fish blobs of three dimensional. <laughs> Jody, I still can't get over how much value was wasted on that plate of that was probably like that was probably like twelve dollars a fish uh, wholesale on there. Some fish have parasites be careful eating raw fish. Yes, uh, Bunny, I realize that. Stay away from amberjack tuna and things like that. Long way to go. Yep. You got a long way to go, babe. Boyfriend's mom would pack me a lunch and give me five Pringles. Wow. And a bottle turning. Yeah, I didn't we didn't have soda. Uh, the only person that had soda was my father would have his diet right soda at night. Diet right cola, and then he went over to I don't know, Diet Coke or Diet Pepsi, something like that. Five Pringles, let's uh it's like the first year. Uh, it's like when I harvest the uh, cherry tree harvest. I get a plate out. I got one cherry and I take a knife to cut it up and divide it between the people. <laughs> Let's enjoy the harvest. <laughs> uh, yeah. Why so generous with the Pringles? <laughs> Like, all right, let's we're, we're rationing these babies out. Boy, I remember Tab was absolutely horrendous, horrendous. We already talked about that one night. Uh, turning in bottles, uh, <clears throat> probably five Pringles or nothing. Um, yeah, that is what it is. Yeah, tab. I just, I don't know. It's like my mother likes sweet and low, and I'm just like, oof. You know, if I was to have that today, it would blow the wig off. I mean, that stuff is just so, so 
rough god rest his soul the god uh, started invented that and pitched himself off of the out of the window in new york city that factory produced that old factory produced all that horrendous saccharin and stuff mm -hmm. well, you, if you can't drink diet sodas you got to try coke zero that's all i can tell people they got it right diet coke they didn't get it right it was it was okay it was functional uh, today, when you're going to buy a nut tree, yes, Barry. And um, this week, I'm going to be calling to see about getting some tree work done. I'm just going to have to gird my loins. And I'm going to have to give in to the spirit of Lent. And I'm just going to have to bite the bullet. And I'm going to have to get some stuff done in there. Sponsored by Coke Zero. Coke Zero. It's a winner. I'm taking saccharin. It came with little pills. Well, yeah, I remember my mother had pill form saccharin too. And then the little pink envelopes. And, uh, oof, oof, oof. Right. Uh, you got to add lemon. Man, Shemay, you probably, you, oh, that's right. You like fireball. <laughs> I like my bourbon straight up. Right. I don't want a beer like Blue Moon. It has orange in it. I don't want to dye it so that it has lemon. <laughs> uh, you had a little pills, but uh, just awful. I don't know. A&W, zero sugar. So it just depends. I mean, the boss drinks Diet Coke. He does not like the taste of Coke Zero, which I, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I think my mother was always that kind of that way too, Catherine. Uh, these little pills, yeah, and I just, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know. It's just, I don't think saccharin is the healthiest thing in the world. Saccharides in general, so. Chompy a long time ago, skinny today. Um, yeah, I mean, look at, look at uh, movies or look at uh, real life videos. Uh, home movies that are 1950s and just look around in life at the average the size of the average person out there Dexedrine. yeah that, that would that would do it little Dexies there yeah lemonade is good but it's all it all comes down to um, it all comes down to diet. Yeah, I think my I think my grandmother made it to 90, 98. How you doing, Brian? She was she was tough as nails. Now people are taking those epic at the diabetes road. Yeah, and they're getting with the deflated face or something. I don't know. Uh, you know, you just, it all starts with controlling yourself right i mean the the virtues of self-control and limits it's something today in today's society that people don't want to be have limits put on them they just they want unlimited freedom to do anything at any time uh, large people that didn't look that large now yeah p2e i hope you're doing good How you doing, Angus? Nice to see you tonight. So we've we've kind of lost the virtue of moderation a lot. I'm going to smoke three packs a day and die just before her 91st birthday. You never know. You do never know. But I don't like to play. I don't like to play the lottery on life. You know, if I can do something like I know I I picked up smoking before I put it down before you guys have seen me smoking and putting it down, smoking it, and putting it up. Uh, let's see. Uh, it's going to be cold this week, Bunny. We got some weather situation, I believe. Alan and um, Catherine can confirm that. You mentioned hey, you guys stopped at their local and had a double decker with a root beer float. Yeah, that's nice. You have to accept the fact I'm diabetic after 20 years. I'm like, you got to sniff. Now, I think I got like allergy season starting up a little earlier. Rain a couple days next week. What about windy and cold? It looked like we got a cold front coming through. 
Uh, it's very comfortable. It's pretty comfortable. I can't say very comfortable here. Hey, how you doing, Kenneth? Texas barbecue, AIDS candy, slim vans, X lax, even prescription pills. All right, take care, bunny. Thanks for coming in. Let's hit the thumbs up. Uh, yes, a windy day. I just, yeah, I've got to look at the wind. I've got to look at uh, the whether the temperature is going to be dropping, whether cold front's going to bring in cold mornings. 32. Yeah, it was. Uh, it's it was probably about 39 degrees this morning. Ooh, 70s next week. I don't understand the weather. Yeah, the lottery. Um, you know, I mean, uh, you know, when I would smoke, then after a while, I wouldn't derive any enjoyment out of it. I'm like, so on May 28th of 20, 2021, I just put it down that Saturday morning at 10 a.m. And I just said, you know what? It's just, it's, I'm not enjoying it. Uh. Yeah, we see you, Jerry. Welcome aboard. Yep. Was covered in frost this morning. Yeah. Yep, we see you. We got you covered. Yeah, let's keep hitting those thumbs up. We should be over 100 um, tonight. For those of you who were uh, asking, I'm just, I have that pizza from last night, so I'm going to have some pieces of that tonight. I don't want to waste that food. Um, I don't know, Jerry, if it took 10 minutes. I don't know how to explain that. So, I was going to do the, let me tell you a couple things I got coming up, okay, now that we've kind of got everybody settled in. Hey, Jamie, how you doing? Good to see you. Uh, I, Shemay, I've not forgotten about the pumpernickel bread. I can help you eat that pizza. <laughs> um, I've not forgotten that Okay, great to see you too, Jerry. So to that end, I need to get some other I need to get some other ingredients. I need to get some other ingredients. I also purchased today a really good quality T fall Dutch oven that I can use to enhance if I want to make a round loaf of uh, bread. Since I'm producing more bread, I'm moving more into my uh, enjoying life mode okay by doing more baking and cooking and stuff like that so it's about time that I had that to bake in and yeah I love pumpernickel bread but good luck out here on the west coast okay um, so it's gonna take a little while to get in the groove you know I need cocoa powder uh, yeah tea falls nice I paid up for it you know I, I paid up for it I'm not you know, I'm, uh, if I buy something for the kitchen, I'm going to buy a good one. I'm going to buy it once, and it's going to last. Okay? Now, that's going to be coming up. We're going to be doing a couple loaves of bread inside of that. And the bread freezes really well. It's going to be a very dark rye bread. Okay? I don't know if it's going to be... Um, you know the standard pumpernickel but it'll be something like cheap cheap stuff in the kitchen ain't never worth it okay i don't like to rebuy kitchen equipment i use my pots till the day they plant me in the ground that's the way it's gonna go okay i got one skillet for life and i'm happy i got two pots i've got one third bigger pot and i've got um uh, you know a wok I don't need any more. I don't need the thing hanging overhead with 60 pans on it and copper and all that stuff. I can't appreciate that stuff, right? You just buy it once, wear it out, fix it up, do without. That's it. Buy once, cry once. That's exactly it. So I'm going to get a good one, okay? Um, so I need to get some, I need to get some things. You get what you pay for in kitchenware. There's no doubt about it. I'm not going to be using aluminum. Not going to have something that's scraping off some kind of Teflon, some kind of weird chemical coating that you're going to be, uh, absorbing. Your body's trying to cope like, what the heck is this, right? How do, where do we put this to the brain, to the liver, to the kidney? 
to the nervous system to you know like i don't need that okay so we got that coming so as a result today i went metal detecting okay uh metal detecting yeah trog hold that yeah you can post what that was the alarming news i only use the pans for my set don't like skillets oh it's fine teflon coating right um so i went metal detecting today and i found something very unusual that i've never found before okay that i never found before so make sure to check that out it's going to be posted tomorrow morning and it's going to be something that we can have a little bit of fun i think restoring okay a really cool little restoration project okay it could, i think it's going to be fun to restore it so i'm going to ask you guys to check out that video and share that tomorrow because youtube loves when you do restoration type uh videos and this should be an interesting little thing to uh, to restore so never found one before gonna be fun it's gonna be good number two um i'm gonna have to bite the bullet i'm gonna have to get some yard guys in there to give some estimates i'm just gonna gird my loins and for lent i've decided to give up some of my wallet all right you know that's <laughs> for me that's like the ultimate sacrifice with the hand shaking <laughs> here's the, okay all right don't tell me i'm don't tell me i'm not doing my part okay that's number two because we need to get that almond tree into the ground and we need to i also need to start yeah let the benjamin see the light of day i also need to start clearing out the planting boxes we're going to do intensive cultivation of them as a move into a homesteading channel and all that um yeah give me a moment with that check a last minute minute together so we got a lot of buzz busy stuff the the Morant's unit is in june's asked about that before the parts have come in to move forward with the restoration of that uh, legendary quadraphonic uh, Moranch unit. That, so there's a lot of stuff coming up. There's a lot. There's going to be baking in there. Going to be expanding the repertoire in Kitchen Stadium, too. Yes, I'm going to be going back to Las Vegas. I want to commit to do some, um, uh, some service work down there. Uh, I've, it's not been defined yet. It's nothing in my mind, but I have an idea of some stuff that I want to do uh, down there. So I, I got a lot of stuff in my, I got a lot of stuff in my empty head here uh, that I am uh, thinking about. So if you guys have ideas, I don't know what I have. I have, I don't know. I got a lot of square footage. Those planter boxes are pretty doggone big. And this is an intermediary step to going back for homesteading and that huge back lot and putting that into cultivation too. It's one thing to grow stuff, it's another to utilize it, okay? How you doing, Randy? I love to watch, I'm hooked on restorations of antique porcelain dots, all of that stuff. People love to see restorations. Now, can I do it? I don't know. I have something that I found that's inordinately complicated. It looks simple, but it's complicated, right? So we'll just have to see how it uh, goes. Is it a top priority? No. Is it a long-term project? Yes. Will it be fun? Yes. Can we do something with the finished product? Yes. We can have something that's very uh, near and dear to us on there. Pineapple rings. Pineapple rings. There we go. Well, I I would my next cake I would bake. I would like to do a pineapple uh, upside down cake, but I just don't know yet. Can we get some thumbs up, Garden? Start the garden small. Well, the thing is, Catherine, I have two different locations. Plus, I have an orchard, right? Um, so, in no way, shape, or form am I prepared to touch that back, uh, the land in the back. I'm not ready to bring that into, that's going to be part of uh, a, a wood-fired oven and uh, all that stuff that's going to drive the city of Santa Rosa crazy. All right, so Trog, what is the alarming economic news that we have today? What did you find that's alarming? 
Yeah, the planters will be my kitchen garden. That's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, square footage there. Okay, you're talking about uh, a lot of square footage. It's a lot to cultivate, all right? So I don't know what the water situation will be in the back. You're defeating the purpose of growing your vegetables and stuff. They make water so expensive here in this county that unless you can use the well water, but I don't know if I have the accommodation uh, to be able to, you know, it's all going to be water. We don't get rain in summertime here. Oh, you were overdrawn on your checking? My goodness. My goodness, a calamity. Why not sell the land in the back? He can make a lot of money. Okay, that's a good question, Bunny. And you're not the first person that's asked that over 10 years. Okay? Yeah, there you go, uh, Chef. Now, two things come to mind. Number one is privacy. Now, to sell that back piece of land means that I have to make sure that whoever buys that piece of land has access to it to purchase a right away to that. Which means now where the driveway is, I'm going to have to put, give road rights to the back so that people can come to and from the back property, which means I'm gonna have a traffic situation on the back. Number two, on the side of the house, right? Constant traffic going in and out. Number two, the land right now is zoned multi-family dwelling unit. In other words, if you wanted to put up an apartment house, you could put up an apartment house in the back there, okay? All right, that's... That's number two. Okay, so it's already designated because the city wants to push people. Now, if I put that back into use and sell that land, somebody could potentially put up an apartment building in the back, which means I would have a lot of traffic coming in and out, and I would lose a lot of my privacy in the back, and I might be at risk, a uh, heightened risk of intrusion for people potentially trespassing on the property number three is and i think this is the real thing bunny like when i think of my life now what would i what would i do with the money that that brought in and this i'm i'm your question was a great one and i often find myself when it comes to ideas of money what would I do with money if I had it? What would I do if a lump sum of money came under my control? How would my life change? What would I do different in my life? And I always hit this stumbling block of, there's nothing really that I would change in my life that, that has to do with money and finances and things like that, because I like what I have now. Um, I've seen people within my own life destroy their lives on money. And uh, people think that money will make them happy, but at the end of the day, right, Shemay's got her land staked out back there. No, I don't think it's a good question, Bonnie. When Missy Jen lived on the when Missy Jen lived on the property, we liked the idea of the privacy that it gave her because she was home alone a lot. Now she had a couple dogs that would absolutely take care of her. But the point is, um, I kind of got my hands full now and I don't like to feel like I'm owned by things. So, uh, you know, I'm, I, I, there, everybody's going to come to a point <clears throat> and bunny, you'll probably come to it too. You're a very, you're young. Okay. But you're going to come to a point in your life where you're going to realize at some point in your life, maybe, maybe not, that you're not going to have a Mercedes Benz, that you're not going to have a big extended cab bed, you know, F-350 diesel pickup, that you're probably not going to go on a luxury cruise. And once you kind of, once you kind of get that idea into your head, then the simple, the more simpler life has a lot more appeal to you.
right? The the idea of a, a smaller universe that you can control and uh, exert some control over. Yeah, privacy is priceless. And, you know, when I first moved onto the Rancho, I would sit there in the morning and people would just cross over the back from shortcutting on the back property. Yeah, you're not, nobody said that you're greedy. I'm just saying. Uh, yeah, it's a hard idea, Catherine. I know that. I struggle. I've, I've already come to that realization. But that's not a bad thing. Because I've never been a really money-driven uh, uh, person when it comes to the acquisition of wealth and things like that. Because I can't see how it would materially change my life. I can't perceive what I would have differently. Yeah, it's quiet to sit in a luxury car. It's a treat to ride with the boss and Janet in their beautiful 2021 Forester or whatever. It's a treat. Right? It's a treat to drive it, but um, sometimes you just give up a groove. What With us, it's giving things up because of age. So you have a, hey, low, low. So it's a substitution is what it is, Catherine. You find new things that you uh, enjoy. Like I've always suggested, beginning to take small walks and things and uh, enjoying the potential of possibly regaining health and, and strength and uh, after going through the mill of, uh, you know, like you went through and stuff like that uh, to, uh, to exert that control and, and uh, plus you're a very family oriented person. You're very deep into what's going on in your family and you're kind enough to share stuff with me. And I mean, what price can you put on that? Right, privacy and freedom, nice cars. Guess what I drive? <laughs> Alan. <laughs> you know, there's no that there's absolutely nothing wrong with treating yourself and having nice things as you go along. <clears throat> if you have I would love to watch a daily Snapchat. Uh what happened to the message? Uh yeah, I don't have Snapchat. Sorry, Lolo, I don't know you got uh, whacked there. <laughs> I, don't I don't know what happened. Jeeps, the older, the better. Um, I don't know. Everything everything is uh, challenging to think about. Um, I was watching your drywall work. No, it was very... Yeah, I, uh, I, there, I have a video drop, truck, track truck called one woman drywall hang where I did the ceiling by myself and everything and I remember the inspector came in and he's like wow you know there was never any deficiency of of, uh, of any I mean I enjoyed it right I'll never do that again but um, I attribute that to my father right you know any 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 drywalls PITA I can't stand Dry, I would never do finished drywall work. Drywall. I would always do um, roughing. I'd never do finished stuff. I don't have the patience to run tape and mud and uh, skim coats and all that. I did it for myself, but I wouldn't do it again. Can't stand that. Uh, I have changed since getting older. Um, you know, uh, they do change. Your priorities do change. But I'm a believer that one door closes and another one opens. Like Catherine says, you start to think that I'm limited by uh, the physicality. But, you know, you see somebody like Catherine in real life and you can immediately grasp the, you can immediately grasp that there'll be other, you squeeze the balloon here, it pumps out there. You squeeze it there, it pumps here. It's all dependent on your personality and what you, um, you know, if you're a person that's a uh, person that lives life or watches life go by, I can't sit and watch TV. Uh, you know, I just can't do that. I've got to be, I got to be doing something or I go out of my mind. Now I might be struck by a stroke one day and unable to do uh, anything. So I will just have to adjust at that time. Whatever health wise happens, I just have to go with the flow on it. So. Uh, you know, I derive a lot of out of uh, YouTube now. I 
shrunk my universe of what I follow on a day-to-day -day basis because so much of it was so uh, was becoming so toxic and it was so um, you know degradation and just uh, just things that I couldn't get any, I could not derive any pleasure of the misery of others and the misfortune of others and things like that. So I, I took my world down, always busy doing stuff, not just cross country. That's what I'm saying, Catherine. I mean, you're not, you know, you have so many positive aspects to your life. Um, you know, hey, how you doing, Lurker? How you doing? How you doing? Yeah, so thumbs up or appreciate it, uh, everybody. Now, forewarned, the more money you have, the more money you spend. So it's a blessing to me then, right? Hey, Jennifer, uh, Tuesday night is Fat Tuesday. I will be drinking Tuesday night, and I'll be doing it up Tuesday night, okay? Just to let you guys know. That'll be my final evening of uh, drinking until uh, Easter. Yeah, just I can't, I can't do TV. Those of you can. There's a lot of people that have limitations, um, and God love them. I mean, your uh, limitations on what I can do. TV is a blessing to them, and programming, and uh, all the channels. Big wheel. It just takes me forever to get it. <laughs> Big wheel. Don't remind me, spring is coming. The kids are going to be riding their big wheels up and down the alley at 6 a.m. on the hot, sweaty summer mornings. Uh, how you doing, Ace? How you doing? How you doing? <clears throat> you know, if I find myself starting to be drawn to art to not to do it. <laughs> Look at my turkey. Uh, turkeys for sale, all right. But uh, potentially getting out art books from the library and looking at, uh, you know, studying art a little bit and things like that. Uh, history. I took a I took a philosophy of art course in uh, college, being a philosophy major and stuff. I was I was interested in the flow of that. So, hey Jerry, uh, no problem. Good to see you tonight. Thanks for coming in. Uh, I've just always had a passion for new things what was that expensive booze bird that made me drink that yeah i might guess that's a good thing you know that's a good idea i might pick up a little thing of cognac which is very delicious and i might enjoy that with a couple beers on uh tuesday night and have our own little uh fat tuesday celebration right now i do have uh, this year's hard to believe it's already Fat Tuesday. Yeah, so uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I think that's a good idea. I think that's a real good idea. I think I'll get a little thing of cognac and kind of uh, celebrate because come Wednesday, I'm going to need to gird my loins for the next 46 days or whatever. Drawing on the right side of the brain. It's a good idea. You love adventure i love watching you yeah so the, the thing i like best about my own channel is the is i never really know which direction i'm going to pursue or what i'm going to be doing fat tuesday is a is a traditional uh thing in the catholic church where you would have a celebration on the day before lent begins ash wednesday you would have one final big blowout because you would have to be uh, living, living lean until Easter. So they call it Fat Tuesday. That's when they have the Mardi Gras celebrations. That's really when, hey, Warren, that's really when COVID really kicked off three years ago. Right? Remember D? Remember D Dub went down to uh, Mardi Gras? And I think that's where he picked up the, the early COVID down there. Yeah, you eat and you party. You eat, you drink. You know, they're down in New Orleans, blowing it out down there and having a good time. Right? Blow out. How you doing, Joni? When I was young, I cared about possession. Now I care about being healthy. That's a good, uh, it's a noble pursuit. Yeah, Nino, it's a, it's a traditional party day. 
unheard of Fat Tuesday. Really? You don't think you heard of Fat Tuesday? Yeah. What do you think people do down at Mardi Gras? That's a celebration, variety and adventure. That's it. I thought tonight was Fat <laughs> No party. Hey, Moose, how you doing? <laughs> no party to attend. Well, the days of uh, the days of reverie are drawing nigh, right? They're drawing to a close. Drawing to a close. Uh, uh, really, Jerry? Have you ever heard of Lent? Has your Catholicism taught you about uh, Lent and your Christian Christianity taught you about Lent? Yeah, Mardi Gras is Fat Tuesday Fat. The more money, I guess I'll just stay home and have another few <laughs> drink. <laughs> uh, yeah. Party like a rock star. <laughs> right? Party like a rock star. Uh, uh, always happy with little. Good, 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 good. Well, then, uh, if you've never heard of Lent, Jerry, I would suggest that uh, uh, you get on and do some rudimentary uh, education there. Okay. Rediscover the joys of your faith, whatever it is. Drop Shemaya line. She'll take you down the road of guidance. And, uh, Ash Wednesday. That's right. Nice to see you, Moose Knuckle. Happy Sunday night to you. Brazilian Carnival. Have to look into that. Thank you. I like to say dumb on religion because the priest told me if you don't know it ain't a sin. <laughs> you get a you get a you get a pass on that. Yeah, the D video from 2020 was epic, man. It's like the whole world. It's like the whole world went downhill after that. <laughs> he got man. He got so messed up. I mean, and then he's, I'm not drinking anymore. Then he'd whack all those Long Island iced teas in Vegas and get all blown out, right? I'll say, D, how's that working out for you? Rosie, don't let me drink again. Okay, D. Right. I got to stop drinking. I'm turning, and he had, he went through his, uh, his uh, Islam period. Right. Uh, hey, Booty, how you doing? What's going on? Let's see what's going on at the Ratatorium tonight. Any little fat... Oh, there's, some, there's a fat one running around there. Let's see what's going on at the Ratatorium. Catholic priest can't get married. Let's see. There's one over there. That one's walking weird. There's a, there's one. Look at that big boy. Nice big juicy jobs. There's one hanging back there. That's called bubonic plague on legs. Full house tonight. Yeah, the hood is alive. <laughs> there you go, Lee. You have an open invitation. Nice big juicy ones. 
<sighs> Man, that one's really running. Uh, best week of the year from the week before is crowded, but not over. Oh, that's probably pretty good thought. I don't know if I'd want to be in a uh, uh, Mardi Gras melee. I don't think I'd want to be in that whole deal. I just don't think it. Uh, I don't think I derive a lot of enjoyment. You know. No, I don't think they. I think this 7-Eleven is pretty doggone clean, and you know they've got plenty of a playground outside with stuff going into the dumpster, and they probably have a way to get into the dumpster and get stuff mm, I gotta eat man I'm getting hungry oh. I really haven't had anything I had a couple little I had some pretzel sticks since that two pancakes really filled me up this morning so metal detecting tomorrow well, they're not everywhere. But if you want them, I can find them for you. I'm always good at uh, being a rat whisperer. Oh, beef stew's wonderful. I have a couple times I made Italian style beef stew on the channel. You can just put beef stew in the search box and you can see them. No, well, you know how it is, Warren. They tell these guys, never go take trash out at nighttime. You might not come back. Food for thought. Oh, yeah. Okay, there you go, Shemek. One of our fine government employees there. President's Day. Very interesting about Abraham Lincoln. I don't know too much about George Washington. Yeah, I find him when I want to find him. Yeah, I don't know, Moose Knuckle. That's that's the uh, Elvis Travel School of Cooking right there. I boil a protein for hours. Work this down 61 percent. Oh. 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 Do, 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 do. It had to be you. Do, 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 do. Be, ba, da, boo. Boo, ba, boo, boo. Somebody said, will the cats be around? Yes, yeah, Shemay gave me that flag. It's American made with tremendous quality. Look at that. This is no cheap Chinese version. Look at the quality stitching here. Yeah, nothing like boiling a protein. Shoo, wow. Right. I'm not one that likes long cooking uh, meats anyway, simmering or crock pots all day. Yeah, it's a beautiful, uh, absolutely spectacular flag. Oh, Hollywood. It's knucklehead clear. See how long this lasts. Do 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 do. 
twenty cats take care. Yeah, you wouldn't find a you wouldn't find a roach around. I mean, a rat around here. No. Hey, bird. There's baby tiger. All right, they're eating. There's plenty of food there. It's always the same. Trotsky. Trotsky looks like a balloon getting so big. So bloated he can hardly move. Talk about needing a diet. The size of that cat. Looking like, oh, what's for eats up on the deck tonight? Oh. The almond tree. Uh, the blue hour. <laughs> do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Thing was on. Wow. <laughs> Woo. That's real energy efficient. I'm just going to be, um, I got this, um, pizza I made last night. So I'm going to continue to, uh, work down on that. Seven Eleven has a no-name gas. Well, it's all on octane rating anyway. Gasoline is kind of gasoline, in my opinion. I could be wrong.
A major route caused by a fire and shut down the Oakland airport. Huh. Electrical substation. <laughs> yeah. I wonder what happened. PG and F strikes again. As Bird calls it, PG and F. <laughs> Get down and party. That Tuesday. Uh, hey, bird. Yeah, I think uh, I, I sometimes wander uh, desert, but I won't. I won't venture an opinion on that because I'll probably be wrong. Oh, I got a plug in here. As we continue down the path of barbarianism, vandalism, all that destroying our nation. Why not just start destroying its infrastructure? Reason? No reason. Just because I want to. Just because I want to. Uh. Right, there we go. We are on the stream. I have a video of them lowering Shimei's tiny home onto the property here. Adobo prefab. Uh, oh, At this point, he forfeited. It's a fellow uh, term. I'm sadly disappointed you forfeited the barley. Translate that for me. Uh, yeah, I called it the. I said that uh, conscience in today's world is on life support. Oh, Moose Knuckle, I'll be drinking Tuesday night. <laughs> I'll be drinking, partying. I think Tuesday night I'm going to have that other ribeye. How about that? Oh, hey, North, how you doing? I'm going to have that other ribeye. How you like me now? <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm going to thaw that baby out. On Tuesday morning, and that sucker's gonna hit. That sucker is gonna hit. Hit. Is the road ranch? Yeah, there's ranchos everywhere. They have a the. Uh, uh, what called? There's a there's a section of Las Vegas called Rancho something. I don't I don't know what it's called. Um, on the Central Coast, on the one of our south that too. Yeah, thing, an hour after. Ribeye be good. No, it's in process, Barry. The parts came in. So this week I'll be back in the shop to begin part three of the restoration. I have to get onto the output, uh, <clears throat> the output, output electrolytics. Oh, thank you, Cash. Uh, the darling of the midway. Don't make me sound like a circus balloon, okay? Hurry, hurry, guys. Step right up. Hurry, hurry. It's the darling of the midway. <clears throat> so, you know, why not take advantage of Fat Tuesday, live it up a little bit, have some beer, have some steak. I'm seriously considering giving up meat for, uh, meat for Lent. I don't know. Yeah, it's the best compliment you could give someone. <laughs> <All right. laughs> 
<laughs> ah, there we go. <laughs> nice recovery, Moose Knuckle. <laughs> Too funny. Oh, that's good. I was kind of need a little hydration. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Um, Lent is about giving up things. I follow Craigslist Hunter and he gets in beautiful electronics. Some could be used for parts, just a thought. Um, yeah, but I wouldn't. Hey, Deborah, how you doing? I wouldn't want to take old parts of electrolytics and put them into uh, restoration because certain parts age out. Yeah, love if you gave up meat for Lent. Exactly. Uh, oh, 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 oh. Yeah, there's certain parts that you did you wouldn't want to use those kind of old parts in a um, in a unit because these special parts, they dry out over time. They lose their ability to perform their function. They, um, they can cause damage. Yeah, I think she's been a vegetarian for years, years. So giving up meat would force us to change our repertoire out here for the uh, kitchen stadium. Not getting up squat. Hey, how you doing, Jen? I'm happy to sacrifice. <clears throat> oh, that hit the spot. Just, Jen, I appreciate you taking time and you comment on the videos and things. It's, it's really, really appreciate everybody stops by and takes time to watch check out the video i'm very appreciative of uh that okay. at least the cats won't be bugging me tonight but, uh, on this channel if you can believe this is much more than one video a day huh it's cool never knew that ronnie too bad that mean and cruel people and we can't send to North Korea. <laughs> you think that you think Alan that would make them uh, appreciative of America, right? We ship them overseas for a little six month sabbatical in uh, on a farm in North Korea. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I understand. I get that, Deborah. You're legendary here. Hey, Wicked, how you doing? Oh, I have actually 20, I have closer to 24 million views. I took out uh, 10 million views of videos. I removed more than 6,000 videos. <clears throat> uh. All right, let's get uh, let's get some pizza warmed up. Uh, get this out and just hit this in the microwave a little bit. Oh boy! So uh, I'll probably do a short video. I think the uh, I think the uh, darn Dutch oven is coming tomorrow. So that's going to be pretty cool. Uh, our local restaurants, I don't know why they would put that on Ash Wednesday week, but they have this restaurant week where they'll have a special fixed menu item for the week. Eat out more often. Sonoma County Restaurant Week. Let's see what they're doing. Begins February 20th. Let's see what they're doing. Hey, Junie. Uh, eat out more often. Let's see what they're doing. 
you can have a blast and make a difference for our local economy. Let's see, boy, they got all kinds of stuff here. Let's see. Let's see what they're featuring this week. Oh, well, thank you, Alan. I have a potentially interesting restoration come. It'll probably fail. But something I dug up metal detecting today, I'd like to kind of see if I could bring that baby back to life. So, let's see what we got going on here. El Coqui, Puerto Rican, June, you love your Dutch oven, great. June, we got uh, the Puerto Rican restaurant here in town. And I need your input on this garlic yucca fries. Here's what you get for your dinner. You get a fixed price. I'm getting ready to heat up some, just some pizza tonight. All right, I need you to weigh in on this, June. All right, I need my beautiful sister June to weigh in on this. Here we go. El Coqui, downtown. They've got the, for 35 bucks, this is what you get. You get garlic yucca fries, fried taro root topped with garlic pico de gallo on here. Uh, how you doing, uh, Deb? <clears throat> All right. Or sofrito bacalito bites. I guess that's it. Cod codfish. Yeah. What is this? Sofrito bacalito bites, which are codfish codfish fritter bites. June is our authority on all things Puerto Rican here. The entree choice you get a choice of one of these palomilla empanizado palo palomilla empanizado breaded thin sliced sirloin steak or you can have costa Rica's and sofrito baby back ribs marinated in sofrito how is that how does that sound? For dessert, you get a choice of arroz con dolce, rice pudding, or flan de queso, cheese flan, or tembleque, coconut pudding. I would take the coconut pudding. Tembleque. I'll probably put James like Rosie. Please don't read Spanish <laughs> Please don't read Spanish anymore. All right. Now, where is now? This is really weird. This is yeah. Puerto Rican food is good. Yeah, my pronunciations are white uh, bueno. Listen, you tell me. Let me tell you. They have a restaurant here, globally inspired Swedish food with blank flavors. Now, what do you think that you would do to fuse with Swedish food? What's, what's the least likely food in the world that you would ever fuse with, with Swedish food? This is mind blowing to me, what these people, what these people have. All right, what they consider fusing together here. All right, unbelievable, unbelievable here. Let me tell you, the name of the restaurant is down in Petaluma down there. Okay, no, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an ethnic food. Okay, Stockholm is the name of the restaurant, and it's globally inspired Swedish food with Middle Eastern flavors. I mean, are you kidding me? I mean, globally inspired Swedish food with Middle Eastern flavors. Now, just just think, I, had, I know nothing, I'm not being disrespectful. But what is 
the thought process that goes in when you think we're going to open a restaurant. Hell, chat found Rosie. I'm always interested in how chat found Rosie. Tell me how somebody sits down and says, you know what, we're going to make Swedish food. Now, that's cool. We don't have a Swedish food restaurant. But I want to, inf I want to infuse it with Middle Eastern flavors. Go sell that to the bank, okay? So that what do they have? And lunch is $25. It's called a meze plate. Pita bread with pita. Hummus, roasted eggplant. Sounds like baba ganoush to me. And tabula. And vegan falafel kebab with either fries, rice, or side salad. Now you're gonna play you're gonna pay twenty-five bucks for that. Twenty-five dollars. How are you gonna mix Swedish food with Middle Eastern? Right? Twenty-five bucks. Now, let's cut over to dinner here. Gravlox, which is cured salmon with a small side salad and dill sauce. And a meatball entree with pickled cucumber, lime and berries, and mashed potatoes. Guess how much that is? Just take a guess. You're going to get cured salmon with a small side salad and dill sauce. And you're going to get a meatballs with pickled cucumber, lime and berries, and mashed potatoes. How are you? Fifty-five dollars. Fifty-five dollars. And then you get a sweet treat for five dollars. Single semla cardamom bun or chocolate cake with fresh whipped cream and berries. Five bucks. All right. Fifty-five dollars. Wow. All right. Like wow. All right, what else we got here? All right, we, we got the beer baron, which is up on the corner where we see the bar there with all the high, right, where I parked the car. You could see it near the infinity symbol of doom and all that stuff there. Beer baron. All right, 15 bucks. This might be okay. For 15 bucks, lunchtime, here's what you get. First course is the soup of the day. Okay, yeah, go to Ikea much cheaper. First course is the soup of the day. You get <clears throat> that. And the second course is you get a Baron Burger, which is an eight ounce ground Angus short ribbon brisket on a brioche bun. Or fried chicken and waffles, which is fried chicken, buttermilk waffles, Fresno chili slaw, maple bacon butter. Or... Fajita style veggie tacos, fajita style bell peppers, onions, mushrooms, chipotle, aioli, Fresno chili, and cabbage slaw. Now, for me, that seems pretty good. 15 bucks. All right. Take care, Amanda. Be well, babe. All right. You can get the burger. You get the soup. You get the burger. You get the waffle or chicken and waffles or the veggie tacos. Now, for 15 bucks, that seems like a pretty good deal because a burger these days in a lot of places, you're going to pay 15 bucks for that burger. Okay. Now, here's what you can get for dinner. First course, soup of the day. Um, then you get the, either the Baron Burger that we talked about or the chicken and waffles or the fajita style uh, tacos. And you get a third course, which is your dinner of choice for 25 bucks. That's, that seems pretty good. I mean, that seems like a kind of a, seems like kind of a pretty good deal there. All right. Let's see if there's anything else here. I just don't understand the fusing of um, Swedish and Middle Eastern uh, food, right? All right, here we go at the Flamingo, which we've been to before. That's the resort hotel from the 1950s here. 
restaurant where you can enjoy a two two course lunch for 25 bucks or a three course dinner for 35 bucks at the lazy way club but i don't know what it's gonna be now franchetti's gust house and beer garden here on dutton avenue i don't know where that is 1229 north dutton that's up that's in the good neighborhood we're at, the, we're at the low end of Dutton down here. So for lunch down there, you get Frikadelle und Salat, a German-style hamburger, beef and pork, no bread, French fries or creamy cucumber salad, or a crispy potato cake with more, more mushroom, mushroom salad, and Kaiser Schmarr and hearty pancake bites with apple and raspberry sauce, whipped cream, for 25 bucks. And then dinner... I don't know. First course for dinner is potato pancake with a paired beverage, Spaten Lager or Villa Gunsugus. You know, one of those 65 syllable words in German. Entrees crispy schnitzel, pounded breaded pork loin, roasted pear salad, and red braised cabbage. That sounds good. Or seafood pasta pump. Pomodoro, lobster, ravioli, seared scouts. Oh, we still got to make the uh, the ravioli stuff. I forgot about that. Desserts. You get a paired beverage, a doppelback, or a Villa Wolf Pinot Noir dessert. You get mini donut with warm chocolate hazelnut center or apple strudel vanilla sauce and whipped cream. 55 bucks. All right? Some good stuff. Some good stuff here. That seems reasonable. Yeti, Indian and Nepalese. The Americana. That's downtown. We walk around down there. You lunch, 25 bucks. House salad or cup of soup. American burger. And a homemade chocolate chip cookie a la mode. Dinner, you get a house salad or cup of soup. Choice of fried chicken dinner or penne pasta bolognese or grilled gnocchis. Housemade ice cream cake for 35 bucks. Doesn't seem outrageous. Let's see, at the Yeti Nepalese place, um, you get the $35 dinner, three course, assorted appetizers, momo, pakora, samosa, or garden salad, entree choice, mixed tandoori plates. Seasonal vegetables or banglong, barret, eggplant, or mixed meats and fish. And dessert is gulab jamun, milk-based sponge cake with honey and rose water. That might be interesting. So there's definitely some uh, definitely some interesting stuff on the on the menu. I don't really see anything else here. Well, Mike's Pizza, I don't know about that. Seared. I don't know. Outdoor dining, pet friendly. Gotta have those pets. All right. Uh, I quit Jen. I, I love Gulu Jumbo. I don't know. I'd have to try it sometime. I don't even know what that is. I'd like to try the coconut pudding. That sounds good. That sounds good. Let's see if we got anything else here. Got anything else? What's up, boss? Uh, Jane Dispensary, now open. That thing looks huge down there. Yeah, we talked up in Healdsburg, they got the Matheson upscale farm to table dining. $55 dinner menu. Owner and chef Dustin Vallette, Vallette is offering a first course. Includes burrata with Asian pear, beef, pistachio, and sourdough, or salarat, salaric, and chestnut soup with duck. I don't even know, man. I don't even know what the heck it is. All this stuff is so. All this stuff, take care, Jamie. All this stuff is so lost on me. I have no idea. Let me, uh, 
Let me get my pizza warmed up. I have no concept what all that is. Give me a plate of mumbo jumbo, baby. Give me a plate of mumbo jumbo. Tonight you're my complete. We still got all that pizza. Do, 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 do. Completely. Do, 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 do. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Hey Dave, I'm just heating up some pizza I made last night. Last away. Hit that a little bit. Hey Mimi Swan, how you doing? Any coupons? I don't think there's any coupons in there. I don't think so. Just local rag. Drop in for your vitamin B12 shots. Stay home, we're bringing cannabis to you. What the heck is this? Sonoma County Transit, all local routes are free. I don't even know what that means. Ooh, ooh. Sazon Peruvian cuisine. <laughs> Any good retro movies? You got Ant Man and the Wasp, uh, Marlowe, Van Age, Titanic, 25th anniversary reissue. Hmm. Oscar Shorts. They closed down one of our like art theaters here. People just people just weren't into it. Alright. That should be nice and warmed up. That'll do. Mm -mm -mm. Get out of here. I don't know if I'm gonna have two or three pieces. I don't know. Oh, shoot, there goes the battery. Ugh. Oh good, we got a cat free zone tonight. We got a cat free zone. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I'll just see how I feel. If two does the number on me, I'll just have two. Like I said, that I know it's buttermilk. Two buttermilk pancakes, not buttermilk, but uh, blueberry pancakes today with the uh, compote, and that really filled me up like all day long. I mean, that really did a number on me. Ooh, I don't know where the kitties are. I'm not complaining. Mm -hmm. I think it tastes even better. Oh well, Buttercup baby, I'm sorry. Oh. I always I always speak too soon. They're afoot. I had a dream of last night with that. 
I have salami on there, which is like a pepperoni, uh, Ronnie. Ronnie's like, you should have put some sliced up some brats on there and cooked that up. Right. Have a Wisconsin style. Yeah, it turned out quite good. Hey, Trixie. Mm. Yeah, I saw that uh, story. A couple people sent me that link to that. Lee's Noodle House. On TikTok, the guy was staring at it in an empty restaurant. The question is, do you sustain it? Well, Akmas, I guess the answer is I'm not I'm not Muslim. No, not really moose knuckle. Yeah, time will tell. Feel good stories and never really have a lasting at least when you look at like uh restaurant makeover or whatever with Gordon Ramsay. Hey Kelly. <clears throat> Salami is actually less spicy. Yeah, help you feel better buttercup. So you don't have a chair to be up on tonight. Hmm? Ronnie be like, you ought to put that Sheboygan brats on there. The, where's the angle of attack here? Right. Give me a chair. Uh, we'll see. Gave up on your Kino. Or keto. Side. Mm, mm. No, that cat's full. Those cats, uh, Oh, no more gambling and no more bread. Oof. I probably walked about uh, three miles today. Yeah, those cats are not, uh, they're not, those cats' whose bellies are going to pop. How nice that turned out. Mm -hmm. That's a keno diet. Is that what you're doing, the keno? 
Now, tomorrow, Key knows the game in Vegas you play with this. Oh, yeah, yeah, the numbers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I try to take a morning walk and an afternoon walk. And then sometimes we go out for an evening walk. Um, no, I didn't take water today. It was comfortable. I did freeze it once. It functioned pretty good, but I made this fresh um, yesterday morning. <clears throat> so this mushroom, onion, and salami. Good, so if I'm doing a lot of carbs, I try to take the exercise up. But this is, uh, this is very tasty. The last thing I froze was I made that loaf of... Well, Jay, thank you. I'm back surprised. I always support. Thank you, Jay. How kind of you. Thank you, Jay. You can't really taste the difference too much. Hey, Jay, thank you very much for your kind support. Glad to see you back. I haven't seen Jay in a while. Mm. Thank you, Jay. I made that loaf of ciabatta sandwich bread and I sliced it up and I froze it. So if I want to have it in the morning, I just take two slices out and pop it in the toaster. Really nice. If it's rainy this week, oh, Jay, it's Jay, I'm just a pressure to. If it's rainy this week, I will be um, having oatmeal if it's cold and rainy. Fight. Oh. <sighs> Soul of the sixties hippie spirit, he sure is. I wish he had a little soul of Hazel the maid. <laughs> like go clean something. Last I heard, Jay, you were like offshore. Been experimenting with whole wheat pizza made with Hawaiian on it. Tastes better with extra yeast and stuff. Yeah. What would you do if I sang out a tune? Would you get up and walk out on me? No, it's 2023. That would be considered good music these days. Everything's moderation, like tonight, two pieces of pizza are great.
Oh yeah, I have a video of uh, something called a Luxman L U X M A N. I took hours working on that thing. You can see, just put L U X M A N in my search box. You'll see a you'll see a failure. It was a mechanical failure. had explosions in the shop you see oh that's cool Jay thank you for your service Yeah, it was frustrating and very difficult to admit defeat on that unit. Make sure your volumes turn very low. How long is your next door neighbor living there? When I first moved here, there's a young couple that owns this house, the red house next door. This guy's a big time contractor. When he moved to that house, evidently he lifted the whole house up and made a basement apartment down below or something. <clears throat> And uh, they're nice people. They had a, like three or four kids. And then about, uh, let's say about five years ago, they moved out to the country and they put this up for rent. And there's two guys, John and Charlie, that live over there. That's the ones you could hear on the fence repair video. You could hear somebody talking in the background. And say, oh, that looks, you know, talking about the fence and stuff. They're always pretty quiet. Once, a couple times in summer, they'll have a big party where they'll have a, you know, a DJ out there or a band or something. Uh, yet a amp I'm working on now is challenging, Moose. No, that the one, the Lux is not the one that blew up. Um, that was the. Um, uh, that was the H H Scott two three two B. A capacitor blue now over here it's very transient on this side because this is all rentals up and down here so uh, people usually stay about you know three three four years and then somebody else uh, moves in so it's, it's a very there's a lot of I'm surrounded by a lot of apartment houses here this is like the last piece of undeveloped land in the whole neighborhood here uh, so it's never quiet here the quiet time is defined between 2 a.m. and 4 a.m. in the morning you can actually kind of hear yourself think if you were going to have quiet time for personal reflection or whatever you would want to set your alarm for 2 a.m have your hour of reflection and then go back to sleep okay otherwise you're going to be inundated with uh, <laughs> with cars emergency vehicles sheriffs uh, city police fire departments the whole shebang people that race their cars that uh, people don't want to be told hey june good night uh, people don't want limits put on them yeah, there's garbage day. People don't want to be limited in life anymore. They want to be free to do whatever they want to do, whenever they want to do it, regardless of how anybody else uh, may feel about it. That's our tough luck. So it's a very, it's a very me-oriented society these days. All right. 
It's all about me. It's all about me. It's just another sign of society going off the rails. No limits. So you have sideshows, you have people that race up and down, do 80 miles an hour on the street, regardless of how many kids are playing or just a, I'm I'm a, I'm shocked that nobody's been killed here on the street. <clears throat> We've had injuries, but uh, that's what really blows me away. You're gonna have to make this post of me, my that's right, Trixie. It's all about me. I am now the center of my universe. Uh, do John and Charlie know about your channel? Um, no, I don't think so. I don't think that they do. They, Nancy and Eric, the parents of that big Siamese cat down there, Aurora, they know about the channel. The mailman knows about the channel. Thank you, Michelle. I rarely see these guys next door. How you doing, Robbie? I rarely see, a, you know, they, they're pretty quiet. They keep to themselves. There's another guy that rents like down below or something. I don't know, but they're very quiet over there. They're very nice people. They're kind of like hippie, hippie kind of people. I think they're like a couple or something. I'm not sure. No, I can't say that because I've seen, I don't know. I have no idea. They're just really nice. They're very quiet and very soft-spoken. So. And then there's Bird and I. <laughs> I don't know, Adam. I, I don't know. I have no, I don't know. There's... There's women that come and go, so I don't know. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm usually I'm usually pretty protective of other people. So I'm not really, in, I'm probably the least nosy person on planet Earth. Uh, you probably know that, by the way. I conduct myself on YouTube. I don't really ever talk about what other people are doing or what's going on on other uh, channels and stuff. So I just kind of mind my own knitting so they've been nice I've been lucky I have been lucky I want to be your neighbor it's kind of fun to be the neighbor here somebody I was coming back from metal detecting and there was a girl on the gal on the front porch today it lives back here they were flying their drone for the first time and they smashed it into the property here so I said come on let's walk back and find it excuse me so, people are familiar with the place. Adam, you live in a very nice home. Very nice. Even if you're just renting a room or something there, it's really nice. Really nice. Heck of a nice kitchen and all that stuff. All right, guys. Well, I think I'm going to. We'll be about seven thirty. I'm going to close it down. I got some things to do before tomorrow, so. Uh, I want to thank you for being here tonight. Uh, let me uh, remind you that the metal detecting video will be coming up tomorrow. Please stop by, check it out. Hey, Lee the Bee, leave a comment. Let me know you came by. Thumbs up are always appreciated. Make sure you watch it all the way through and then thumbs up. That way it, uh, it counts. Um, so great night tonight we have some nice discussions and some good fun so tomorrow will be another day bunny good to see you tonight jerry thank you to my moderators the best core in the business we've got shimei we've got i <clears throat> didn't see cheryl tonight but ronnie was here i appreciate that we had jody kins on here so uh thank you guys for everything that you do angus good to see you tonight and Angus, the cats are happy. All right. 
Take care, everybody. Take care, Adam.